Jada Plinkett Smith, I'm sorry. It turned, you know, she did that whole bullshit. Cleopatra is black documentary. Oh, Cleopatra was black. Oh, turns out Isaac Newton was black. And all those TikTokers who keep telling me that William Shakespeare was actually black. Is that a thing? Well, one person somewhere on TikTok <laughs> reckoned it. Really funny opening. You can appreciate the gravity. And he oh, goes, I think they laboured the point a little bit too much. And yeah. Like, Don't say it. Yeah. But yeah. But it then he would then, I got to Google. But then the doctor kind of gives into it and says it too. I thought the Mamity thing was going to be like a fun little end to the episode that they. That eventually the doctor would go, hang on, we said Mavity. Mavity. He's or like, or we, I, we have I, to I've go got to back. fix one thing. Yeah. But they don't have time. Because why does he say gravity at that point and then correction? Because he's outside of time. He can always see fixed points. He knows what he can and can't change. Oh, right. So technically he would know it's meant to be gravity. So he'll go back at some point and fix it, I assume. Yeah. And I, I didn't think it was going to come back. I thought he, they were just yeah, going to be a Mavity joke. It. And then it came back two or three times and got me um, every time. I'm like, yeah, very I was nice. like, God, imagine if that's just a running gag for like the free. <laughs> for Shooty's whole season. For Shooty's whole season, the same Mavity. Because really, they don't say gravity all that often. No, yeah. So, I so you could that control too. How often do you say gravity? Just change yeah. it to Mavity on yeah, Earth. Exactly. It's um, not like red lights are now green all the time and you have to actually think about it. It's literally just like. A fun little if thing. anyone says gravity, make them say Mavity for the next two seasons. Exactly. Because funny. And then the doctor can just constantly be like, I need to fix that. Like, <laughs> like I, I need to deal with this. But for now, okay, Mavity. And Mavity that would be works. pretty fun. Doctor Who is back. Yeah, you can say it. Yeah, it's allowed. I, it's... Thought, I thought this was a really good episode. It made me forgive all the little shortcomings and cheats just so Russell could get these two back together. I mean, immediately, he got rid of the sonic screwdriver. I and I'm like, was, oh, we're yeah. doing an episode. We're, we're going hands-free. Like, where, yeah. ooh. This Fifth obviously could have fixed here. everything. You know, yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, as soon as he got rid of the Sonic, I'm like, yes, okay. And the TARDIS. We're doing yeah. it. It's the Doctor and Donnie get trapped on a spaceship, and there's two evil copies of themselves. Yes. Like, it's as simple as that. And they have no that. conceivable way to escape. Yep. Or nor, nor do they really know what's happened. One of some of my favourite episodes are he can't just leave or, like, he can't just solve it with time. There was an ex machina at the end of the episode as far as, like, the TARDIS knows. It's the new midnight. This is, yeah, I suppose just from a narrative sense, if at any point your hero can remove themselves in the situation, it becomes tension free. Yeah, exactly. Or if he can yeah, get everyone on board. Which is something I always I think. think. Like everyone should just get on board, yeah. An episode like this where it's completely drama and tension driven and there's not there's no one for him to save if he can just fuck off yeah you have to get rid of it and it's a massive staple from classic who was just oh the tardis is gone or we can't get back to it because the romans picked it up and carried it away and now we're fucked until we get it back like it it's was just a, a reason to drop them into a narrative needs, yeah. i'm i want it to come back more i very much enjoy the doctor not knowing where he's going i didn't write as many things as i normally do when i'm engaged i don't even think about reviewing or writing yeah i i saw a comment saying that you could imagine moffat would have had this whole episode being trapped in isaac newton's bathroom or something so the fact that <laughs> dave has just kind of had it for an opening gag where yeah. moffat probably would have sucked himself in by, to, yeah. to a newton episode um i really like the um you know the, the banter all that's on and then also just everything's here in the, in, the, in this episode for me it was everything i loved about doctor who growing up where there's tension creepiness some great character stuff and it's a little bit silly and to me that's that's it was kind of the perfect blend and it's it's the doctor who i fell in love with yeah it's very camp or it's very tense yeah and going from the meep which is like ah oh, it's a silly little puppet that's evil to this it makes you wish that this was the first episode because then what would people complain about would everyone say Doctor Who is back? Because, yeah. again, this is... It's not exactly Midnight, but it has all the elements of Midnight that a lot of people enjoy. Like, it's got massive tension. It's got the Doctor being the Doctor and the Doctor being the Doctor being the Doctor's downfall. Yeah, it's reflective. Yeah, the more yeah. he doctors, the worse things get for him. Yeah. And the line later on is... How can you not think on a ship full of questions? Yeah. And I was like, ooh, good line. It's a good line. And because like that's it's true to the character. You and, can't yeah, help but think about it. And it's always yeah. best when your characters are the reason there's a problem. And then the the countdown line where you guys, I did say it was a countdown. Yeah. Because, yeah I was great. right, just in case. I was surprised at the level of green screen and given that this was meant to be kind of a creepy episode, just how bright everything was. I think they missed an opportunity. I mean, at least from my non. You know, I've only been on a few small film sets in my time. I was like, oh, it's going to be a creepy episode. I kind of wish that hallway was maybe tighter and a bit darker. I think it kind of works the fact that it is, like, if you want to run away from it, 
you run one direction away from it. Makes it simple narrative-wise. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot easier to follow. And also having it bright. Otherwise, you're ready for tension right off the bat. Like, you're just like, oh, something bad is going to happen. Whereas this kind of has an eerie feeling without being... Like, oh, it's a spooky horror movie. Yeah. That said, the CGI doesn't super hold up originally. It's it's fine. Yeah. I'd say it was fine. And, like, they, they, they have enough practical spaces that when you're back in the hallway, you're accepting of it. It does, again, make it feel like 2008, 2005. Like, the CGI it's, isn't massively better. It's mainly just the set extension hallway. Like, because it's a big green screen. There's yeah, nothing there. But they at least have the good sense to make the robot real. Like, they don't interact with anything fake in this episode. No, they don't. Everything they touch or use or, like, deal with is either a stand-in, yeah. a puppeteered robot, or a wall that they actually built to spin around. Like, they they made it smart. I was reminded a little bit of that um, what Samuel it, Jackson goes oh. to a Hayden Christian episode 3. A Sith Lord, we must act quickly. And then they, and then they, like they, they walk because <laughs> it's a green screen. So in this, you've got Donna going... We're going to have to kill it. Let's go. And then they go out and they're walking again, talk, making reference to a song we don't hear in the film, in, in, this, in the episode. Uh, I think you do hear it, but it's very, it's, it's not like centered. And yeah. I, I don't know I the don't song well, to under. Yeah. I thought you might, because maybe it's like a British staple going off maybe the Maybe if I've heard it, I'll be like, oh, yeah. The that. fact that she's like, oh, we up. used to sing this at school. I thought, yeah. oh, maybe you would know. So you just, <laughs> okay. And it's only called Wild Blue Yonder because. He wanted to reference the fact the song is jolly, but also about war. Right. So, like... Sure. Maybe that's the Doctor, because he's jolly, but he's also been through a lot of war. The Wild Blue Yonder is the... I don't know. Also, the TARDIS is blue, and it's a wild. <laughs> Maybe it's as simple as that. Yeah, it's... Um, and also, they're in the space yonder. It's kind of in that yeah. kind of space. But, um, yeah, I was just reminded a little bit of that, where it felt like there was going to be a determined, run, let's go there, let's see what that robot is, and then it just... But that's also determined by the yeah. giant length they would have had to run. Yeah, exactly. So, it's like, so again, I, I that kind of works out. Yeah, it, it was just a little, like, oh, just felt like the energy was up, and then we were just back to walking anyway. Just off the back of the CGI, there was a little bit of a Waters of Mars moment where the Doctor he gets on the back of the robot, the Malp thing, and then he like nos rips it down the corridor at like super high speed, which just reminded me from when they get in the little speed car and they're speeding. It's, Golf it just, kind of thing. it just got me the throwbacks to like Waters of Mars is one of the best episodes ever made, but just the vision of the Doctor speeding down a long dark corridor mm. with bad CGI that threw me back there. So, once again, the Dr. Donna is the best part of the episode. The just, both of them Just the together. sheer characterization. Yeah. They know who they are. Davis knows who they are. So, they're written like they should. It's There's no incongruity of the way they act or speak. It's, it's like, yes. This could have almost had happened in season four. It could have been a story right there and it would have been fine. And uh, Donna does bring up her family a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just meant to be a re as to why we're determined to get off this yeah. other than just self-preservation. It's to get back home. I guess she she used to want to go on adventures, whereas she doesn't anymore. I suppose so that's what it is. Yeah, it, I guess it's not out of character at all. No. It's just interesting. It's... It, it made me, oh man, we only get three specials. If only we got some kind of like six specials in one year and it's David and Catherine because it's just, it's like no yep. one's missed a beat with it. And I was watching that behind the scenes stuff and I really appreciate Russell stick to the idea because I thought the tension, the questions of all of this and unlike Moffat, who maybe at his worst would try and outwit the audience member and go hey hey you thought it was this russell almost wanted us to figure out alongside the characters well, they, they, he just straight so, up tells you at one point yeah like, it's a countdown and then they reference yeah. like, he's like see i told you it's a countdown yeah so, so he makes so he wants you to put that in your head like so when the airlock was open i mean it was like i was someone committed suicide immediately for me i was like i guess he wanted you to think that they came in that time yeah exactly but so it's playing on that but i just really like that you're figuring out as it's going along. I was excited to figure out all the little things, like why is the robot moving slow? Why is everything shifting? And like I thought it was really fun. You know, they go into the panels, they get separated. And they would that just whole cut, bit they where would cut back to the robot moving a little who. bit more. Exactly, and you don't know who's who, so you get those fun where you think, oh, this surely has to be it. And then just the, the freakiness of two creatures not knowing the basic rules, like... Oh, when you when you drop the tie, the tie still has to exist. Fantastic. Yeah. When did you realize Tennant had been replaced? The moment he walked in the room and, and really? got down, I went, "Oh, that isn't him." Oh, when he crouched. When, that, when he crouched. When he down, crouched. Oh, I was that like, isn't him. "What? That's wrong." Yeah. I'm like, "That's not Tennant." But they didn't cut back to David, actual David, for just the right amount of time. After he crashed down, 
I was on edge of my seat. I'm like, no, that's not him. Yeah. And then he didn't respond just the right amount. And then he responded just the right amount. And then he knew information that you wouldn't think he would know. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it is him. And you're like, but he's still being weird. But then he talks about Wilf and you're like, oh, is he just sad? And like, I'm, you're back and forth. Yeah. You're like, oh, it is him. It's not him. And it's so well done. Yeah. And then they just flat cut to the real doctor and you're like, oh no. It was so good. And like that, and because they were setting up with a few first person behind the pillar type stuff. So they're setting up that something yeah. is around. Something's around. But they, they also needed to do that because the start is very slow. Which is yeah. good because it gives an eerie atmosphere. Isn't but it, you yeah. also don't want people to get bored. So yeah. you, you, I think it was one or two shots of like through the vent, someone's here. You're like, oh, exactly. something is awry. And it's it's just great character stuff that it allows. Like it's, it's stuff that I love Russell for is that he will always find time to have character moments. They spent 20 minutes just talking to each other. Yeah. And they, like, were, they were going somewhere, which again, the corridor comes into it. Yeah. Because it's a very simple way where here. We need to get to there. Yeah. We're not just going to run. We're in no immediate danger. Yeah. Except, again, the TARDIS knowing that something's wrong, so it fucked off. And I do like the explanation of, oh, I turned that off, but I guess you wrecked it with coffee. I'm yeah. just like, like it's it. dumb, but it's got a good enough explanation that you're like, cool. I loved his delivery, how it, like he says it on his breath. Oh, well, yeah, best turn the hands off. I mean, I was in orbit for three years <laughs> once. The story he tells about how the TARDIS could be anywhere and it could be there for a millennia. I fucking loved that. Yeah. Like, I want a little stop-motion animation short or something of, like, pe cavemen finding the TARDIS, and then they build their city around it, and then the city crumbles, and it's just the TARDIS. Do you think like, it's supposed to be, like, almost him as well? Like, oh. The no, no, like, how I was thinking, why is that there? Other than just it's, it's just fun that the Doctor would go off on a tangent like that. But also, it kind of represents... The Doctor the sees doc everything live and die. The, yeah, and just the, the Doctor himself or themselves. Mm, I, didn't, is, I didn't think of it that way, but totally could be. The creepy, like it wasn't like extreme body horror, but just having the arm be long and then having the Again, eye. Again, very 2005. Yeah, because it's it was a little bit goofy as well. But in but the it, best possible in the best way, way still. They're still balancing it so well. And, they've, and their performances are really good, like David being a little bit of a creep. From the behind the scenes, it does sound like Davis just wrote them as creepy. And then About Catherine and David just brought this energy of like... Cold. Yeah, they, they're just so good at was, characterizing was, these was things. there a reference to the, i didn't go back the venom films that she said yes, she's, where she, does she all says, the extra mass come from yeah that's that's is that a thing in venom because he gets bigger from yes the, he can grow out of nothing because he's tom hardy and then he can grow huge and he can stretch his but, arm but massively long but scientifically you need to get that from somewhere like so yeah. something can't so come that's from nothing davis's explanation it's, of it's taking heat energy and converting it yeah that's his explanation of why donna would understand because her husband's a nerd i guess and is watching venom and being like Hang on a minute. Yeah. He's he's nitpicking I Venom. That was such a fun, like, it's, yeah, nitpicking It's very venom. clever because, yeah, it's like... It's just basic firm. I don't like, know my wife knows stupid there. things yeah. about, like... Like, she would be like, where does that come from? Because of me just constantly whinging about things because yeah. I like to nitpick things on the internet. Yeah. I really... It really struck home and I really, really appreciated what somebody said how he was tempted to throw in a William Hartnell to do some 60th anniversary yes. things. That... With these characters, you definitely could have done. You definitely could have had uh, these like monsters go look back into their old memories and go, "Oh, you were Matt Smith before. Yeah. You were." Oh, I I, I picked the wrong body. Yeah, oh, they no. totally could have done it, and it would have been. But you know, in this Leo pointing meme culture we have, I really appreciate that already in a nostalgic episode of "Hey, it's your favorite Doctrine companion." We then don't need another layer of nostalgia. It also really helps us just connect with the Doctor Donna. Like, because that, that's all we have in this episode. That's all we have. So we're and not distracted by, yeah, we're not distracted at our screen. We're, we're just like, Exactly, because cool. it would have been, the, you know, a lot of the Mandalorian and Ahsoka stuff where it's all just shit you've already seen. Like, how can we have, I mean, I mean Doctor Who is a wonderful example of we need something new constantly because you can't just nostalgia because if you just nostalgia find nostalgia you've got none you've got nothing yeah. new and and doctor has always been a great show of like just constantly evolving how the third doctor stories were like scientific based stuff where it's you know it's all unit and yeah, military trapped them on earth for a bit more yeah, because they needed, earth, to, they needed and, to reinvigorate it exactly so the story you know obviously it's still doctor who but it allows i mean it's the greatest idea in television history because it allows any kind of genre yeah. anything to happen at any time it can be funny scary Especially as of Blink, like showing that you can do Doctor Who with very little Doctor. Same in it. with the uh, that 
the absorb a love episode also doesn't happen. Yeah, which, like yeah, know, they and kinda... as, they both work as episodes. Yeah, I, I fucking love Love and Monsters. A lot of people hate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a soft spot for it. That's the fun thing. Yeah, like they show that even without the Doctor, you can have incredible Doctor Who. I thought the bad guys, you know, to call them bad guys, it's just uh, it's a great way for the characters to character at each other. So you get, you know, great emotional um, David banging himself, like or hitting himself or hitting. He loves looking at Donna through a glass. Loves, <laughs> look, loves that. Um, I think the tension of, even though you feel like, you know, you've seen stuff like this before, like, are you the real one? Are you the fake one? It was still really, like, good stuff and it allowed the characters, It was probably like, executed perfectly here. Like, the heartbreak when, not the heartbreak, but you feel so betrayed when she sinks and starts laughing. Like, it's frightening. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking because she, he's opened himself up to essentially his best friend, like someone who that, who that version of the Doctor really fought a lot of, you know. And it like, works on a ton of levels. Like, you've got the fact you get to get that out of the way, you get to get Donna's legitimate reaction, Yeah. but then you also get to take that away completely and, and reset it so dumb. that you can then play it a bit more mysteriously or just leave it completely. Yeah, and we assume she plays it dumb at the end when she's like, oh, you know, it's like looking into a furnace. It's hard to really figure uh, out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like maybe she can remember space some brains, things, but they can it figure it out. go through. But yeah, I think you get the best of both worlds there. Yeah. And the fact that fake Doc takes off his tie yeah, and then drops so it. Creepy. And you're like, in my brain, I'm like, oh, that's really clever. Like, he wouldn't have an idea of shape. But that's the fake Doctor using the Doctor's brain to figure out what would be a good way and then Donna, the where's your tie? I was like, ah, oh, exactly, good. so freaky. And then he goes, oh, I see. Like the emotion goes, yep. it becomes observing again. Like just, just little touches. Obviously, we have the big visual effects of him doing the um, the Exorcist type walk and then yep. getting too oh, big. Oh, that looked awful when he was like, yeah, his, and that to speed it crutch, up a bit. Crutch doctor, was yeah, terrible. It was, it was a bit. It was stuff where I wish maybe. But is that because the first episode was big and the third episode's big? I don't know. I feel Maybe, like yeah, that's they, not any better than like that looked like the Lazarus experiment when they yeah, were getting big. Yeah, like, they spoke about budget in the um in the behind the scenes, like can we afford this? Do we need to yeah. scale back? It, it so feels like it doesn't have any stuff. extra budget in this episode, apart yeah. from maybe they could never have done that much green screen. It's so hard to tell. Yeah. But it's still, it's well done enough and it feels classic enough that they get away with it. Yeah. And it's just amazing how it's such a, you know, it's that balance of it's silly but creepy. The idea that you've got villains that don't understand uh, the intricacies of shape. Like when they said. They show them like, learning too, I think. Which yeah. Comes like back they to don't understand slow. So it's like yes. they couldn't understand why that was happening. That, that if it was happening happening quickly they get it but is that a dig at the audience they can't <laughs> yeah i know i i it thought could be. because it was like i'm glad it wasn't when the doctor wasn't like it's probably becoming a bomb or something dangerous like even though in the back of your head you're thinking it's probably going to involve some kind of explosion right because well the only doctor thing who. they tell us is the numbers he works out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then you hear them i couldn't super understand them so i didn't recognize them as a countdown apart from the fact he says it's a countdown but I think the bad guys learning constantly and it unfolding in their brains what everything is kind of goes back to the puzzle box nature of the entire and episode. Yeah, and then, Because you are figuring it out. You're like, oh, that robot is moving somewhere. Everything's kind of doing yeah. something. Like, And the Doctor can't help but think, which is the great thing, as oh, you were saying. Perfect. Such a I, great... fucking, I, I love single lines. Like That's that's why I love Moffat so much. Yeah, he has some it's good great stingers. single lines. And then, yeah, this was one of them. How can you, how can you not think in a ship full of questions? Got me. Yeah, because it's, it. it's true to the Doctor. He can't help but... Because, you know, you kind of have to... I mean, they've referenced it before, the lampshading of this character, that since this is a story that has went on for many seasons, that, like, the Doctor eventually has to reference the fact that he's just constantly getting into scrapes and yeah. solving problems. He can't leave things alone. He can't leave things alone. Especially so at the things... start of the episode, Donna's like, no. Yeah. And he's like, come on. Yeah, let's, little, let's have little a little exploration. Yeah, because... We're stuck here. Because they could have just sat there, but mm. it's true to the character that he can't help but wonder what's through the door yeah which probably works pretty well because again donna references her family because she wants to stay so yeah the she donna wants to go back to her family but the doctor coaxed a little bit of the adventurousness yeah. out of her and then she immediately regrets it exactly so i think that was quite clever and too. they have like that argument with each other then they say sorry like they understand they're not going to help each he other has a bit so of an outburst best friend kind of he's yeah he's the most emotional version of the doctor we've seen probably yeah which it definitely is like he's allowing little changes. It still feels like number 10 or what. The, I wonder if they're doing it because that's why they chose, like, that's why the Toymaker brought back 10 
because he was the most most emotional yeah. doctor, and the reason he stopped, he turned into assuming a little, the time actors in this. Yeah, he turned into a little boy being Matt Smith because yeah. he didn't want to feel that strongly anymore, and he got carried away at the end because of how emotional. Like Time yeah. Lord Victorious is his emotions getting the best of him, yeah. and him thinking, "Fuck it, I'm a god. Let's do this shit." Yeah. So um, I think maybe that's part of like davis knows he's making this doctor too emotional but that's the point i, was, I saw a fan say we should call this doctor 410 instead of 14 410 oh, yeah. i'm not mad just a fun city again idea. It's, yeah he's 14 so that it's easier for them to reset with shooty probably yeah right instead of it being this but weird, like... at the end of the next one it, from the the giggle preview shooty rocks up at the end of the giggle someone tell me what the hell is going on here the bad guys are spectacular for most of it. Again, it's a lot to do with David and Catherine just being yeah. incredible at what they do. Yeah, I, th I thought of them as separate, which is silly, because yes. obviously, but I did think of them as separate characters. Well, uh, from the behind the scenes, it looks like they would play the scene as themselves, then the bad guys, so the extras would know what to do. They get to talk to something that isn't green screen, which really helps. But then at the very end, they take away the threat massively because I like that fake Doctor turns into a horse and <laughs> runs down the thing to get there quicker i'm completely okay with that because he's, he's shape. shapeless yeah. like yeah he can do whatever he needs to and like the other the space captain was maybe a horse judging by the skeleton fake donna decides to delay them but then the doctor just pushes her out of the way and then donna just crash tackles her yeah. and i'm like we're worried about was these it... guys escaping and becoming a war and like whereas they haven't actually done anything scary yeah I, I think yeah it was this whole they have to have a stake in it so yes, it's like oh these guys really well. will get in this ship they'll rock it towards earth and then they'll just cause problems and and then that They've was the creep bit, back. same with the midnight yeah it's same a bit vague midnight. but then they, they don't keep it vague enough for me so the fact they give it a they give them a general goal. We're going to go over there and yeah. cause some shit. If it was just... They're, they're, they're just an entity that wants to fuck with whoever's on there. Yeah. Like, what are their powers, really? It's not... It's less about they have to stop them getting out. Yeah. And more about they have to survive. Yeah. And like, then... The goal is to get Donna back. Say say the TARDIS came back and the Dr. Donna escaped and the bad guy stayed on the ship. It would take them 102 trillion years to yeah, get that, back. Yeah, that's what got me. So yeah. it only matters... If they take the TARDIS. The TARDIS yeah, should have been the goal. The TARDIS should have been the goal, which has happened a few times, but I guess since the TARDIS isn't there making getting the TARDIS, but maybe that could have been the final thing where yeah. awesome. the TARDIS finally appears and there Which were... they go into with the Doctor picking the wrong Donna. I thought it, it got I me. I thought they were going to kill her three right, or four times. Even though I was like, there's no way they're going to kill <laughs> Catherine Tate because I know I in know the next in the episode... Google. But, but it would be this twist that maybe in the next episode he had to reform out, the bad guy to turn him into the yeah, good guy. Yeah, it turns out he took he took the wrong one, and she had a whole episode, and then yeah. at the end it's revealed. They that dragged it on towards. just long enough that yeah. I was like, "It's funny though. Why is Mister Bean funny? Why is Mrs. Bean funny?" And then the, what he felt was the right answer was just because it, it just is. is. Yeah, I thought, "Oh yeah, yeah, that would be it." I thought it was going to be. But also, some if you put so. someone on the spot and say, "Why is this joke funny?" Would you say it just is, or would you say because the, the vegetable woman? And, like, that's kind of the same thing as it oh, just so kind like of is, because that is an inherently funny. Also, because for me, because I was thinking of Mr. Bean, the most iconic comedy character True. of all time. So I was thinking, is it because of that that it's just yeah. Mrs. Like putting, Bean? Yeah, putting like... Donner on the spot, it was just a dumb idea from him. Yeah. So I guess they're showing he's fallible. Yeah, he made a mistake, and then, yeah, the, the, the TARDIS scan. And then it allows you to have that rescue moment that it worked. Even though you kind of know, obviously, they're not going to kill they off Donna. They jettison via the yeah. ramp was strange. But that's the thing. It's like, it goes back to, they wanted certain stakes, but then they couldn't have them. Yeah. But I didn't, I, I really loved the fact they got me because they dragged it along enough and they played it well enough. I was, yeah, I was engaged. I thought they the... were going to somehow kill her and then maybe reform this being into her. But then I'm like, no, they're coming back, no, they right? Can't, yeah. And then they just didn't go back. And I'm exactly. like, he's coming oh, back, right? Yeah. The, the, well, the, well, that was where the tension was, is that. Yeah. So I think it was just incredibly well done. Well, that's what I want to ask you. In the, in the, t in the two and a half seasons of Jodie Whittaker, was there ever anything like this? Trapped on a spaceship. Yes. Solving a problem. Funny you'd mention that, because there is an entire episode of the Jody, sorry, the Doctor, stuck on a spaceship with an evil entity, evil. By herself? No, unfortunately there is an entire crew of people, a pregnant man that is giving oh, birth on a table. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm yeah, thinking of. Yeah, I, I, yes, the, the pregnant man. Patin. 
Yes. The Pating is an evil little creature that eats a spaceship. It's Stitch. Stitch is on a spaceship. Yes, it is Stitch. He wants to eat everything. And it's the same general idea of the Doctor is stuck on a spaceship with something evil. But Can't get to the TARDIS. Correct. But there's an entire cast and crew. People that run this spaceship, passengers, pregnant male people. <laughs> which is, again, it's like, even if you're against the way Davis does his, like... Uh, activism. It's still subtle. It's still so much better than what Chibbers gave us. Yeah. Like the fact that Chibbers was just like, it's a pregnant man. <laughs> or just the Stephen Fry going, oh, aren't you the doctor? I've had an upgrade. Yeah. It's, it's like, it could be. Must you really like, it could know. be worse. And then guys, even the advertisement was the glass, glass ceiling breaking. <laughs> Oops. But, that, that, but that's something a female presenting doctor couldn't understand. Davies at his worst. It's so much better than Chibbers. Yeah. A brief look at Reddit was most people thinking this was a very good episode. Okay. I want to know what the right wing see. I want to see Whether they're going to focus on black Isaac Newton. <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. Uh, a small reference to... The Doctor being bi. The Doctor being bi, which isn't that much of a revelation. The Doctor could just appreciate... Like, he, yeah, he likes a good machine. He looks... He yeah. goes, oh, you beauty, looking at, yeah. like, a machine. Maybe yeah. he's just appreciating that biological, like... Like them good genes, yeah. baby. And like, look, there, there's a there's a whole contingent of Alvada fans who are probably annoyed he was the snogging doctor. Yes, I mean Paul McGann is the first kind of. I th my dad, I think my dad doctor. even said, "Why does he have to kiss everyone?" Yeah, and like, I'm like I, shut up, old man, he's hot now. Yeah, and I agree. <laughs> like you know, back in the old in the old series, the doctor was the hero that wasn't romantically motivated, and except for maybe John Pertwee, didn't solve problems with punch ups. And all yeah, that he stuff. he was the action doctor. Yeah, before ten, but five. Was like the hot one, which yeah, is now, years old, which is now yeah. David Tennant's uh, dad-in-law. Yeah, so that's fun. That like, yeah, he was the snogging doctor from the eighties. So yes. it's just a bit of a seventy-six. I don't know. Eighty-one. Eighty-one. So that's a fun little thing there. I really liked being back on the TARDIS because it was just cool seeing that camera work of it, like panning over as he comes down and yeah, go and up behind before. the scenes. Oh, it is a really, set. Yeah, it's really great to see. And then, and in that behind the scene, I think in that preview we have. Shooty in that TARDIS. Yes. With, yeah, I think there, was there like a jukebox well. or something? I think someone said, oh, there was a there jukebox. There is a jukebox. So as you said, maybe there's going to be an adding of stuff over time. Yeah. Because it's such a blank canvas, you feel like it's room to add a character. Yeah, I want it to be a trophy room. Give me a hat Tra rack. I thought it was really interesting that they touched on the point of uh, the salt crossing thing, which is an old superstition of monsters and stuff. Oh, how the Meep was like, I'm going to tell my boss. And then Doctor's like, ooh, ominous. Don't like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's, but another that ominous, that it's another ominous point that, I'm, I'm, that it just makes me go, okay, so what are we doing with that? Because he's saying, I did that at the edge of the universe where things are in flux, if you will. So all of a sudden these things could become true because yeah. I did it over there. Or... Yeah, the walls are thin, so things might have heard. So the ghosts might take that on board or something. Right, so it's a little bit... I think it's... I, part of me was like, is that just a potential mystery box Davis has put there? And maybe someone will go back to it someday. Like, we never got a Dream Lord sequel, even though the end of the Dream Lord episode is him still in the reflection. Yeah. Which maybe is Moffat. And, Mo and Moffat has said in the past he will happily plant seeds for himself <laughs> that he might come back to later. Yeah. And Davis maybe has done something there that maybe he just wants to have something there. Maybe he just needed a way to wrap up the episode Yeah, more. Or, or just it's meant to be just an eerie, it's not all hunky-dory, there might still be a few consequences. Just to way of just going like hey it's not all hunky dory after 40 minutes yeah but also if they're treating shooty as a reset maybe that doesn't matter at all yeah uh <laughs> and then we land back in the market and then we get to see an i'm not crying you're crying bernard cribbins oh, jesus christ and it was i mean you know he's one of the you know he's one of the great british actors um he was the voice of the Wombles from, you know, if you ever know that. <laughs> it's an old British show. He, like, voiced them. It's very cute. And, you know, he's like everyone's it's... granddad. He kind of represents everyone's granddad. I think the most upsetting thing was that he seemed so together. Like, yeah. he's got his lines flat. He's remembering. He was he's, himself. He's, yeah, he's yeah. acting exactly the way you'd expect for him. And then he died, like, a month later or some shit. Yeah, like, and, like, but it was great to just see him again because... I'm glad we got something. He's technically a companion, so I can say he's, him and Catherine are, like, joint because that the final he just breaks your heart every time when you watch that final yeah. way he's like i don't want you to die and it's oh God, it kills me <laughs> and you know so it was lovely just seeing him even for just that little bit because mm. so uh but it seems what the toy makers making everyone go insane yes um the preview says something about there's an evil doll that giggles and it's psychically making everyone crazy 
Okay. As far as I can tell. Cool. Okay, that's fair enough because it did seem like everything was fine and it wasn't. And yeah, it was just, it was just yeah. I mean, I didn't expect to see him. I thought he'd be next because I knew he was in it. So I just assumed it'd be episode yeah. three. So yeah, it just. I'm hoping he's at least in the start and they give him a good send off. Yeah, I only say that because Russell put it up on Instagram saying that the character of Wilf will never actually. And also, as the Doctor, I always struggle with death with Doctor Who because in. Let's go back for, in time. For Doctor, no one's dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he can always go and visit them. Like, but so if he always, visits them, that changes the past. So yeah. It's like so how much of the Doctor's interaction? How many times can he interact yeah. with them? They kind of seem to play it as wherever the Doctor goes, he creates fixed points. Yeah. So maybe, can he fix wanting, Mavity? I don't, I don't, know. I don't think anyone. I kind of hope he doesn't. Now that we've talked about I it, I think that would be a great continuous gag. Mm, yeah. Now that we've talked series. about it, and the fact that you don't say gravity all the time, even in Doctor Who, you barely bring up gravity. Yeah. Maybe at the end, if it's just Mavity forever, it maybe would have been fun. If the if it was Shooter, you did it. So maybe at the end of Shooty's run, he goes back to Isaac and goes, maybe gravity sounds better, and then just goes off again <laughs> to touch on that point of why has it got to be black? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I think I'm. You know, there's the episode where the Shakespeare thing where Martha's concerned about her race, and the Doctor just goes, just walk around, you'll be fine. Yep. And then, but then I don't want those points to be missed because. You know, like in the we one of the great season four episodes is when Martha asked, when the Doctor is just Professor John Smith. Yes. And there are references to the fact that she is that race. And, you know, like I think it's important to still have that as a reminder because, you know, the Doctor, the show is still rooted in history and education, particularly when you want to be historical on other points. Well, yes. like, you're not going to have Rosa Parks be played by Well, the by Rosa Olivia Parks episode doesn't work if Isaac Newton was black. Like, exactly. If a lot right. of historical figures were black. With, with Bridgerton, it's, it's, it's referenced. It's, it's in the, the book, the they're all queen, white. Hey. But in this, they go, oh, the queen was black, so therefore socially. So they make it a thing. And then in something like The Great, where... Well, they, it's they just, say it's not a true it's story. Just, it's just bollocks. Yeah. And it's so silly. And in the third season, there's the American ambassador who looks like a dollar bill. He's talking with the English about it. He goes, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to get rid of the you out of colour. And it's like, bastard. <laughs> so it's very silly. And but, they're, all, they're all British accents. They're all, yeah. they're all British accents. So in That's that, saying, I can, can we really Can you really say anything if like Chino everyone in Chernobyl has a British accent? Exactly. I'm like, re-watching that. Exactly. I, I have no issue with all that. I suppose... It's and also intention. in this, in Doctor Who, even though you could say, well, he's kind of meant to be, you know, originally it was an educational, historical drama type thing. Uh, actor availability, maybe this was the one fella they had and they needed someone for a day and this was the guy and yeah. they went with it. It's also the intention behind it. It's like, did they all get in a room and go, ah, he needs to be black. We need some representation because there's only two white, guy, white yeah. people in this whole thing. Or they're just like, oh, fuck it. Okay. This guy's fine. And I suppose like, that's what it is. And I know someone will make a hold to do about it and go, oh, they made Isaac Newton white and yeah. black. Well, they don't have much to complain about in this episode. They don't at as all. As far as that. So they're going to no. have they're gonna have to oh, they're, 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 they're going to jump on David maybe being bisexual or gay. Yes. <laughs> but, but apart from that, there's not much to really go on. But for me, it was like, oh, okay, they made Isaac Newton black, which is... I mean, you just go with it. I mean, it's not a big deal for me. We probably shouldn't even touch on it. The alligator under the bed. That in Harry Potter, the moment you ask the question is, what did they do during World War II? <laughs> did the wizards try and help the Jewish people? Yeah. And the problem with Fantastic Beasts is they go, hey, nuclear bombs. So then you'll... You, the fact that you've asked that question is now giving the audience to nitpick. If you don't acknowledge it, then we'll just ignore the exactly, gate yeah. under the bed and the alligator under the bed. So with this... If you don't acknowledge that race was a thing and Shooty can walk around fairly freely, it's fine. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, a, it's an issue that I, But I don't be want it to be to Shooty go. going, oh no, it's 1920s America. I best put on my white thing. <laughs> better, white, yeah. better white up. Maybe. Yeah. Now, so overall, really great Doctor Who. It's why we love Doctor Who, overall. I'm most excited to see how people hate on it, because I fucking love this one. No, I the last it was one, great. I'm like, the last one was a decent episode. De that's what I said, it was run of the mill. But this is a particular this is, standout this episode. This is the new Midnight. It gives me hope, and it makes me so excited when Davis actually gets a clean slate and gets to just have 15 and Ruby Sunday just being fresh together. It's, it's still so interesting how it is almost... It's almost exactly like Midnight in a lot of ways. It just shows, again, 
how important the doctor and the writer yeah. is. And you can't just yeah. get anybody for either. You need, yeah, you need them both. They need to click. And that's the great thing about, and I'm so excited to see what she's doctor's like. I'm just really excited for some good weekly who that's going to come next it's year. It's weird. <laughs> it's finally coming back. It made me realise just how much I've uh, missed Doctor Who because I haven't watched it since Capaldi, since that was, that was first episode of Jardy. And it, it, it makes me happy that the Doctor has still got it for me it as it did when I was 13. back. Especially with last episode, we were optimistic, but this episode, I'm like, yeah, it's it's here, yeah. it's here we are, it's here, and um, you know, it makes me happy.